Hi, good morning. Good morning, sir. It is good to hear your prayers with so much of energy. Did you feel it? You also felt it, no? Very good. So, why is it very good? Whenever we start something, in whichever beliefs, faith systems that you have, the worst is what? Somebody says, I'm an atheist. Some of this trend is catching on now. You'll hear a lot of people saying, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. You know why people say that? They're very simple. When they ask me, they tell me, some of the students are growing up today, 10, 11, 12, 17. I don't believe in God, sir. I ask them, okay, adult or student, what kind of a God you don't believe in? I just don't believe in God. I said, okay, I want to know what is that concept of God that you don't believe in? Is there all these, you know, the statues and the idols and all this and the stone and, you know, shivaling and whatever it is, or the Jesus Christ effigy and all that. I said, I tell them, you know something? The best part is, I also don't believe in God like what you're talking about. But I believe in God. That's not the concept of the God that you're talking about. But this, when you start something, you always start with a concept of purity, a concept of sincerity, a concept of loyalty. I'm committed. I am with you. I shall be with you. Even when you hear that, no? Sickness or death. Whatever it is, I shall be with you. That's my commitment. Have you noticed? Mothers don't have to give that commitment to the children. Have you noticed another thing? You and I have this men and women and my body concept and how am I looking? I hope I'm looking pretty or smart or handsome. Have you realized to children, there is nothing called men and women. Do the children have anything? They know mama quantity and daddy quantity. They know mom and dad. But they don't know whether mom is a female and a dad is a male. They don't know that. So that concept has come up to you and me. Now with this simple understanding, the prayers is to tell that the supreme forces all around us which is whether you're a scientist and you say, I believe in unified field, meaning this whole universe is automations and working together for a beautiful harmony and product called this planets and the, you know, the cosmos and the universe. I believe in that. That is the scientists talk about. Scientists talk about proving things, proving things force of gravity outside of me, outside of me. Where was the apple? Outside. Where did it fall down? Outside. What happened? Forces of gravity. Acted upon where? Outside. Galileo, Copernicus, you know, Grambell, any name you talk about it, outside. And how do you perceive it? With your five senses. Correct? You see it, you perceive it, you touch it, you taste it, Smell it. But the supreme science is proving things inside of you. And that's how you do the prayers for. So you've heard about many masters, let's say Swami Vivekananda. If he had read, those days it used to be 24 volumes, now it is 33 volumes of Britannica. So in Velur Man, they got the, in the library, the entire Britannica. So one day his disciple and Swamiji, they walked into the library. He was very fond of reading. And as Swamiji was looking at the encyclopedia, his disciple told him that Swamiji, I wish I could 
sometimes in my life finish reading Encyclopedia Britannica. So Swamiji said, why do you say that? He said, it's so difficult, so many books, so much of information, how can one learn all that? He said, oh really? He didn't know, the disciple didn't know, Swamiji has already gone through 12 volumes out of the 24. He said, okay, the first 12 volumes, you take them aside. He took it out, he was, the disciple was a little surprised, why is he asking me to do that? Is it okay? Open any page on any volume. See, open at random page, volume 3 and page, is a 366. So he closed his eyes and he said, on the left page it is talking about this, on the right page it is talking about this. Please check the cross reference in the page number 600. So what are we talking about? Prayers? And good to hear your energy, link it up. What did he do? What did Swamiji has done? He has tapped into that powerful resource which is you and me, which is within us. Proving that is called spirituality. We were talking to somebody and he's a Western-minded young guy, 24-year-old, doing very well, became a good friend. His name is Andre, he was with us, very nice, good guy. So Andre was talking to me about religion and spirituality. And he said, but that is also religion. I said, religion is a way of life. Spirituality is the way of your finding out the truth from within. Now education makes you and me, the school system, etc., to discover that power from within. And that's what you read everywhere else. You see, Vedantic teaching and learning with the International Baccalaureate. What is IB talking about? What Chadaman talked to you all about just now. That is asking question. Finding out. Asking question is not easy. To ask a question, you have to know a lot. Then only you can ask a question. Notice, children have a very simple way of asking a question. They will just say, why? So one father came one day and said, sir, I now don't know how to handle it. I said, why, what happened? He said, it was raining. He said, why is it raining? So I tried to explain it. He said, why? Why is the cloud forming? He said, I tried to tell him about how the cloud form. He said again, why? Just one question, <laughs> word. He said, now I've run out of the answer. How do I now handle this why? So I taught him a trick, how to handle that why. And the moment he did that, this boy, instead of doing that, he quickly looked at him. He said, okay, now you caught me. So, what Chadamam is trying to talk to you about Ask questions from within, whether you are fresh into the International Baccalaureate or whether you have been well-traveled, your journey, you are asking questions through Vedantic method. Vedanta does what? Same thing. Talks about Kuto in means Upanishad is asking, where did I come from? Who am I? Why am I here? Who is this? Body and the mind. If you look carefully, what are you and I doing today? We are learning things, right? In the school systems, college, university. Learning what? Through the five senses? You're experiencing the world. What? Your family, your people, your office, your money, your property. With what? With the five senses, which is what? Your body. Body is feeding that data to the mind. Mind is saying, uh uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. What junk is he talking about? Who's saying it? Mind. Another mind is saying, I like it. So, this is the mind and the body which is realizing this learning process the world outside, the people, the friend, the family, the money, the property etc. everything. And this is what the great masters, Guru Nanak Ji, 
he was giving a session in Punjab and from there, those days Punjab, he was in Lahore. He was walking, so one of the richest guy in Lahore came and said, Gurudev, would you please come and stay with me? At least spend one day, bless my house. Then he said, okay. He went down and lived in his house. As he went to his house, he was going there. He found the high house top. It's got lots of flags. Small one, big one, very tall one, colorful, old top. It's quite not common. No? The Guru Nanak, he asked him, what are these flags for? He said, oh, if I Guru Ke Kripa, it is your Kripa, that wherever I made one lakh rupees, I put a small flag. When I went 5 lakh rupees, I made a bigger flag. And like that, it's bigger and bigger and 10 lakhs and 20 lakhs. So he just nodded his head. And next day as he was going to this champion businessman comes and says, Gurudev, before you go, give me something so that when I die, you, I will go and catch up with you. I'll show you that and say, remember, I was your disciple. You stayed with me one day. Please take me to heaven. So Guru Nanak Ji said, okay. So he took out from his jhula, you know, patao jhula. He took out a needle with which he must be repairing his little clothes. He used to wear one cloth only. He gave the needle to him. He said, it is very precious to me. Please take it. When you die, you bring that needle with you. I'll remember it. So he was very happy. He went and told his wife, take care of a cleaner. When I die, you give it to me. Wife said, Hanji, as she was going, her wife is smart and answer. Suddenly she comes back and says, Dekho ji, how are you going to do that? He said, why? He said, when you die, how will you take this needle with you? So he thought for a while and he said, you are right, take pole. He ran, went and caught up with Guruji, you did cheating with me. How will I carry this needle with me? Give me something which I can carry. He said, then why have you got all those flags on top of your head? He went ahead and became one of the biggest disciples. So what is happening with this mind and the body? We are being driven to enjoy this so-called the physical world outside. But with your prayers and with your spirituality and with your learning process and answering and asking questions, you are getting into a higher world which is called the spiritual world. Which is this world? Now you all are hearing me, you can see me. Who's seeing? Who's hearing? You say, I. You say, okay, who is this I? He said, me. And you give your name and whatever it is. Have you noticed, supposing somebody is using a denture, now can you tell me whether the denture is his own teeth or whether it is the false teeth? You can't. Unless, let's say, you go down to that man's house at night when he has gone out to sleep and he has removed his denture and now you see his face without a teeth, then you know that was an artificial. That means, what is it? You see the denture without the person. You know who you are when you see yourself without your body. How do you do that now? That means I have to die. You are doing it every day. When you go off to sleep, and you get up in the morning and have a wonderful sleep. Ah. See, did you have a sense, sense of your body at that time? You forgot your body, no? When you go into, let's say, some reason you fainted and fallen down and you're unconscious. Do you have a sense of your body? No. Then can you hear me? No. If you're in coma, perchance, should never happen to anyone over here. Can you hear me? No. So who's hearing? Not your ear. Not your eye which is seeing it. It is the eye of the eye. It is the ear of the ear. It is the touch of the touch. What is that? That is called your consciousness. If you're conscious, you can hear me, see me, touch me, enjoy the world with what? 
your mind and your body. So consciousness operating through the mind and the body. What spirituality? What is this prayer doing? You're getting connected to that consciousness. What is Vivekananda doing? You're getting connected to that consciousness, which is extremely powerful, which is within you and me and the children. Awakening that consciousness in the child with an attitude, I can what anything. I was poor in maths. All I have to do is have a good maths teacher and keep practicing it. I don't know anything about golf or sitar. All I have to do is have a good golf coach and sitar and practice every day. So you have to practice over here every day. First is how to learn. So international baccalaureate pedagogy, it means a way of learning and facilitating learning. Now, if you have been very good in maths, learning maths from you is very easy for me because you are good. So, when Vivekananda went and asked his guru, Paramahansa Ramakrishna, can you show me God? And he had asked his question to everybody and everybody laughed at him. His, his guru said yes. So in other words, he has learned maths. So you and I have to realize it ourselves. The learning is not painful. It's a very joyful experience. It is not... Do you remember that person who made you get out of the classroom? You've not forgotten. Who made you stand up on the bench? I still remember. My teacher used to make me stand up on the bench. And I used to stand up and he used to come in front of me. His name was Anil sir, I still remember. He was English teacher. He'll come down and he'll look up at me and he'll mock at me and he'll tell everybody, look how tall Robin is and everybody will laugh. And I used to tell silently in my mind, I'll show you one day. <laughs> it must have happened to you also. And that's all. The whole school birth in every one of your mind, and that you are a teacher today, you must have said, I must show it to the world. This is not the way to learn. And that's how you and I got connected today. So, get back to the consciousness. How do you get connected? Okay, it's very nice to say get connected. It's very simple, it's not complicated. And our ancient Vedantic methods is talking about it supreme knowledge. How do you get that supreme knowledge? This is why you hear our gurus, teachers, Jesus Christ. What are they saying? Be kind, be loving. That means purity of life. Be peaceful, be humble like the grass. Be patient like the tree. Have you noticed if you walk on top of the grass, the grass bends down. And as you walk out, the grass again goes up. Let's say everybody is playing football on top of the grass. The grass apparently goes away. You stop playing football, grass will come up again. It's very difficult. So the ancient Indian methods, if all religion, most of them, they follow a simple process. When the wife, bride comes home, the senior boss, generally the mother-in-law, would welcome the bride with remember that pot of milk? What does that symbolize? It says she's supposed to kick it. Kick it with the foot. Meaning, abundance of this universe, I'm bringing it into the home, but I do not get become enslaved by this money. I'm beyond it. It's below my feet. Have you noticed? Kali Mata standing on top of Shiva. Why? Shiva is supposed to be the eternal. There are all beautiful meanings given over here for you and I to get disconnected from the material world and yet be in the material world. You don't have to run away. Be here, get connected with the supreme power within. Learning with purity. What is the first thing? Don't tell lies. Vedas schools first philosophy. Live with purity, 
tell the truth. It's not easy. It's very difficult. But if you establish, you know what will happen? Twelve years given in Vedanta. Bhagavad Gita talks about it. Swami Vivekananda has written about it. If you live twelve years without telling a lie, every word you speak thereafter, it will come true. Just because you have said it. Why? Because God will run after your words now. Who is God? Look at an entire, this beautiful cosmos, this universe, the planets and the systems. This is what? It's like an ocean, no? Like an ocean. Your consciousness is also like that ocean. And you and I are little waves in that ocean. We are having a little childhood, a babyhood, like a little bubble and a little froth and become a little bigger and little bigger and we become bigger wave and bigger wave and suddenly I look at that wave which is next to me and I said, oh my God, I can never be like that. That is Atul Kirloskar. Or I will say, no, 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 look at this, that one is, my God, I can never have a car like that. And who is that? Maybe Ratan Tata or Dhirubhai Ambani or Bill Gate or these are tsunami waves can't even think of it and you're thinking like that and from a bubble and a froth you are a wave so what does the wave do? is restless it can't stand still it has to move have you noticed you and I can't sit still? so don't curse the children when they're doing like this so the monkeys also do. But if you're very good and attractive, and if you know the trick, all you have to do, show the monkey a banana, no? The monkey now will come run after you to just get that banana. So have a banana for the children all the time with you. Every day think of it. This is what Shadamayam was talking about. Learn how to learn and facilitate learning. Stop teaching. Teaching is I know everything. Whereas where is it? The supreme consciousness. Where is it? Within you. Knows everything. All you have to do is dwell into it. Where were the forces of gravity? If we know everything, then why are we doing school and college? You're just polishing it. Polishing it. Meaning, understand. Forces of gravity. Isaac Newton. So an apple fall. Where was this knowledge? It came from where? Was it inside the apple? That it fell and it came out from there flying into his head? Or was it inside the earth when it came and struck the earth? From the earth something came out and came into his head. Was it there? It was within him. Where is that? Within the consciousness. All it did, all he did, or Galileo, or Copernicus, Granbel, or Wright brothers, they kept thinking and thinking and asking questions, why, why? And they discovered it. From where? From within them. And that's with the true education. The more you discover, you become maybe the greatest inventor of the world. You know? Or a great philosopher, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Because you keep asking questions. Now, this wave is going, like me, is having a lot of fun, like each one of us. Suddenly one wave from the next who is playing with me, like my friend, suddenly says, can you see that line in front? He said, yeah, what is that? He said, that's called the shore, shore line. Mountains and rocks and the sandy beaches. He said, what happens there? He said, when you go there, you die. He said, what? I die? What do you mean by die? He said, you'll not be a wave anymore. He said, really? What will I become? He said, you'll become water. He said, what is water? He said, you don't know. He says, no. He said, you are made of water. He said, me? Water? Where is water? I am a wave. He said, you touch yourself anywhere. <laughs> you are only water. And he's confused. Like you and me. He said, okay, okay, all right. Okay, okay, I'll think about it later. When I grow old, I'll start thinking more. 
you're still going around merrily towards the shore. But you're thinking, I die? Buddha had that thought. When he saw that man, you know about that story before. Buddha asked, will my wife die? Will my parents die? Will I also die? The same question, this Vedantic, this wave is having. When a Vedantic wave comes next to him, he said, why are you looking worried? He said, I was sure I'm going to die there. He said, that is true. He said, I don't like dying. He said, really? You don't want to die? Vedantic wave said, there is a way. He said, really? What do I have to do? He said, you are a wave now. You don't go to the shoreline. You become still here now. Just become calm. Stop being restless. So what happens when a wave becomes still in the ocean? It becomes the ocean. So the moment you are the ocean, the entire knowledge, the wealth of the ocean is yours because you are the ocean. So the moment you get connected with that consciousness with which you are perceiving through the mind and the body and experiencing this world, you suddenly realize you control that world. And this is what is happening through each one of you. You have to become aware. It becomes sound sometimes maybe a little complicated to someone. It is not so. Recently, we just come back yesterday and day before, Saturday evening. And during this holiday, I was talking to Shah the man that in our life, this is the thought process very strangely started happening to me and I was talking to ma'am and we were discussing. We make so much of preparation for studies and examinations and those of you, some of you were participating in our, some of our good friends who work together. We make so much of preparation for a journey, for your holiday. No, you buy your tickets and reservations and passports and visa and foreign exchange or collection, saving money and buy gifts, preparation for the holiday. So much of effort. Months and months it goes on together. This is for my mother, this is for my father, for my family members. I was just thinking, we make so much of preparation. What preparation are you and I making towards the time when we are not going to be there? This is the time. And it is not death as in just dying because you and I are not realizing we are pretty happy by going along. It is not that death, but it is not being aware is called death. You are dead to the world is why? Because you are ignorant about the world. Let's say a plant, a tree or a cow. Cow is not, is pure vegetarian or a deer, or a fish living in the water. They should be very close to God. They don't eat non veg But vegetarians also have life, no? So it is not the way we eat, but it's the way we conduct ourselves, how we live. What did Jesus Christ say? Love thy neighbor. Love the neighbor. Why should we love? Earlier days, what is to do? They used to go to the neighbors and rob them, no? Rob them of their children and the wives and make them their slaves. He said, now, love thy neighbor. Consider, do unto others as you would do unto yourself. So, this is a way of life. The moment you start to learn and practice and establish that, you start to get connected to your con consciousness. How do you know you're getting connected? You do get connected, you are connected all the time. How do you know? You notice you get intuitive messages. Supposing you were thinking about my birthday is coming up, I haven't heard from mother for a long time. You're thinking, suddenly train, train, phone call comes. You pick up the phone, mommy says, hi, but shake, I say, Hey, mommy, how? I was just thinking of you. How did she get connected with you? That intuitive message is there. 
and she got connected through that. She got a message: "Ring up your baby, ring up your daughter." Understood? So we are connected. Only thing we have to become aware of it. We have to become conscious of it. So we wish you very good luck. You have a wonderful journey. There are tremendous processes of learning here. Keep discovering tremendous rich material. You got a great series of heads of the department, the heads of the subjects, the the coordinators, the heads of the program, the principal ma'am, and most importantly, it is you. You got your own self. Learn, ask questions. Do other parts of it, ways of doing things. Shardha ma'am is organizing on 22nd. When you take care of that little paper in front of you, lying in front of your foot, maybe in the toilet of an airport, or in your own house, or in the school, take care of what ma'am was talking to you about, the property. Then what happens, your property, which you say is my property, automatically gets very good and clean and clear. Who takes care? Mother takes care. The Supreme Mother takes care. I wish you a very happy and a good journey. Thank you very much. Love you.